Opening night was supposed to be a night of joy, the culmination of my many hours of effort. Sure, I thought there would be hiccups. I wasn't expecting it to go perfectly on the first try. However, it turned out there were more than a few hiccups, because a certain six-legged mega beast had other ideas. It all began with an idea, a gladiator fighting pit where I could pit one of my top military dwarves in one-on-one -on -one fights against a series of increasingly vicious enemies until they either emerged victorious and got showered in gifts and praise, or they suffered the ultimate embarrassment and got killed in front of their friends and family. There's no coming back from that. I constructed the fighting pit in some free space I had by the hospital where I dropped dwarves off a bridge. I thought this might have the added benefit of giving any potential gladiators a nearby spot to rest and heal up, should they win and be allowed to leave the pit. The fighting pit was made up of a couple rows of seats, leading down to a hole in the ground, where the fighting would be taking place. If I've shown one thing in my videos, it's a concern for the safety of dwarves, so I made sure there was an overhang over the open fighting pit, so that combatants couldn't climb their way out. The fighting pit itself was a simple room, but outside of it was a hub of activity. There was the barracks that guarded the fortress stairwell from any potential escaped combatants. There was the lever room, which was responsible for raising and lowering the bridge that would allow access to the fighting pit, and also releasing enemies from the cages when it was their time to fight. And finally there was the storage area, where caged enemies would be kept on hold while a fight was set up. I wanted to capture three enemies, one for each round of the fight, and it just so happens that goblins like to pointlessly siege me every year, even though we always crushed them. So when the annual goblin sacrifice arrived, I just held back and caught a bunch of goblins and trolls in my cages, before wiping out the rest. Now I had a goblin for the first round, a troll for the second, but nothing for the third. It was a little bit tricky to find something, because something tougher than a troll doesn't just waltz into the fort every day. So I reset my cage traps and crossed my fingers for a cyclops, etten, giant, or minotaur to come a goblin. A semi mega beast would be ideal, not only because it would be a fairer fight between them and a dwarf than a full on mega beast, but because they could be caught in traps without going through the hassle of harassing a cave spider until it shot webs onto a trap. Years and years I waited for something, anything to show up, but other than the annual goblin siege, it was quiet. Eventually I relented and built a tunnel from the fighting pits into the cavern so that maybe I could attract a forgotten beast. I just needed to catch anything. I made sure I was careful about it, or at least what I thought was careful, by building a bridge-based airlock system that would hopefully trap the Forgotten Beast inside the tunnel. After even more waiting, a Forgotten Beast finally arrived. It was a great hairy grasshopper with horns, indigo hair, and web shooting capabilities. It had appeared in the nearby caverns, but without a clear path to get to us. At this point I was so desperate to put on this fight that I just sent a miner on a suicide mission to dig a path from our tunnel to where the Forgotten Beast was trapped. I should have noted that maybe something was wrong when a single kick to the head immediately killed the miner. I did notice something was wrong when the Forgotten Beast entered the tunnel and shot webs at my chief medical dwarf, immediately killing him. In my excitement, I had kind of forgotten to read the description of the Forgotten Beast, so the webs were a bit of a surprise. I don't even understand how a grasshopper is capable of such a thing. The instant it entered the tunnel, I gave the command that someone should hurry up and pull the levers that would trap the Forgotten Beast. But by the time they arrived, the Forgotten Beast was too close and they ran away. It was too late anyways, webs were flying and dwarves were dying left and right. My most trained squad of dwarves, kitted out with the best random assortment of armor that Stonecrafts could buy, and equipped with some of the finest adamantine weapons, all dead. Perhaps my soldiers weakened the Forgotten Beast to the point where a mere engraver took it down in the stairwell, or perhaps the engraver's bite was just that strong. But finally, the Forgotten Beast was killed after a rampage that claimed the lives of nearly a dozen dwarves. Blood was spilled in the fighting pit, but not the fun kind I had wanted. In some ways, I guess the engraver is the first champion of the pit, but it's kinda hard for anyone to feel like a champion when you're opening night bombs like this. Thanks for watching.